I'm Robert Hur, United States Attorney for the District of Maryland. We're here today to announce the federal indictment of former Baltimore City Mayor Catherine Pugh on federal tax and wire fraud charges, as well as the guilty pleas of Gary Brown Jr. and Rosalind Weddington. With me today is Special Agent in Charge Jennifer Boone at the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Supervisory Special Agent Matthew Hooker with the Internal Revenue Service Criminal Investigation, Acting Special Agent in Charge Troy Springer with the Washington, D.C. Regional Office of the U.S. Department of Labor Office of Inspector General, Kelly B. Madigan, Acting Interim State Prosecutor, and, and Inspector General Isabel Cumming, Baltimore City Office of the Inspector General. We're also joined this morning by Assistant U.S. Attorney Martin Clark, one of the prosecutors working with the uh, agencies on this investigation. Uh, another Assistant U.S. Attorney working on this matter, Leo Wise, is unavailable this morning due to the press of other official duties. A federal indictment has been unsealed charging Catherine Pugh with conspiracy to commit wire fraud, seven counts of wire fraud, conspiracy to defraud the United States, and two counts of tax evasion. There are many victims in this case. The victims are all of us, the taxpayers, and the people of Baltimore who expect and deserve integrity from their public officials. The people of Baltimore expect, and they should expect, that elected officials place the interests of their citizens above their own. Unfortunately, the allegations in Ms. Pugh's indictment and the facts as laid out in Mr. Brown's and Ms. Weddington's plea agreements indicate a betrayal of the public trust. Ms. Pugh took office as mayor of the city of Baltimore on December 6, 2016. According to the indictment, she owned Healthy Holly LLC, a company that she used to publish and sell children's books that she had authored. <clears throat> Between June 2011 and August 2017, four Healthy Holly books were published, with each book listing Ms. Pugh as the author. The vast majority of books published by Healthy Holly were marketed and sold directly to nonprofit organizations and foundations, many of whom did business or attempted to do business with the Maryland and Baltimore City governments. The allegations in the indictment fall into two categories, those relating to wire fraud and those relating to tax-related charges. In the first category, the indictment alleges that from November 2011 until March 2019, Ms. Pugh conspired with Gary Brown to defraud purchasers of Healthy Holly books in order to enrich themselves, promote Ms. Pugh's political career, and fund her campaign for mayor. Mr. Brown helped Ms. Pugh solicit nonprofit organizations and foundations to buy the Healthy Holly books. The indictment alleges that Ms. Pugh and Mr. Brown employed several methods. First, by accepting payment for the books, but then not delivering them. Second, accepting payments for books and having them delivered, but then converting those books to their own use without the buyer's knowledge. And finally, by double selling books without either buyer's knowledge or consent. In other words, selling copies of a book to one buyer and then selling the same copies of the book to a different buyer. <clears throat> Ms. Pugh allegedly stored quantities of fraudulently obtained Healthy Holly books at various locations, including her residence, her state legislative offices in Annapolis and Baltimore City, her mayoral office at City Hall here in Baltimore the War Memorial Building in Baltimore, and a public storage locker used by her mayoral campaign. For example, according to the indictment, thousands of books that one particular buyer had bought and donated to the Baltimore City Public Schools were delivered to and stored in a warehouse used by the school system. Ms. Pugh and Mr. Brown allegedly arranged for thousands of these books to be removed from that warehouse for her own personal use. Ms. Pugh also allegedly arranged for some books bought as donations to the Baltimore City Public Schools to be delivered directly from the printer to her own office in Baltimore. This was another way in which Ms. Pugh and Mr. Brown secured a free inventory of books for her own personal use. Ms. Pugh allegedly used the proceeds of the sale of fraudulently obtained Healthy Holly books for her own purposes including to fund straw donations to her mayoral election campaign 
and also to fund the purchase and renovation of a home in Baltimore City. In the second category of charges that relate to tax violations, the indictment alleges that Ms. Pugh sought to evade the assessment of taxes for income generated from the sale of Healthy Holly books. According to the indictment, Ms. Pugh and Mr. Brown created the pretense of an ongoing business relationship between Healthy Holly and Mr. Brown's business. Ms. Pugh wrote checks to Mr. Brown for tens of thousands of dollars from Healthy Holly's bank account. Ms. Pugh allegedly told her tax preparer that the payments to Mr. Brown's business were for business services that he provided. And she then uh, instructed the tax preparer to deduct those payments as business expenses in order to lower her tax liability. However, these payments from Healthy Holly LLC to Mr. Brown's business were not for business services. In reality, Mr. Brown's business provided no services or products at all to Healthy Holly LLC. This was a ruse, according to the indictment. Ms. Pugh and Mr. Brown created false documents to make this ruse stronger. Ms. Pugh allegedly caused a false Form 1099 to be issued to the IRS, reporting the payments to Mr. Brown as business expenses. Mr. Brown, for his part, created fake invoices to correspond to the payments that he received from the Healthy Holly bank account. What was really going on, according to the indictment, Mr. Brown cashed out over $62,000 of these checks, all of which went to Ms. Pugh or to fund straw donations to her campaign committee. Through the sham alleged in the indictment, Ms. Pugh did two things. One, she lied to the IRS in order to pay less in taxes. Two, she violated Maryland state election law, which prohibits making a campaign contribution in someone else's name. According to the final counts of the indictment, Ms. Pugh allegedly filed false income tax returns for the years 2015 and 2016, in which she underreported her income. For example, the indictment alleges that for tax year 2016, Ms. Pugh claimed her taxable income was a little over $31,000, and the tax due was a little over $4,000, when in fact her taxable income was over $322,000, with an income tax due of approximately over $100,000. In other words, her taxable income was more than 10 times what she reported the IRS for that year, and she owed over 20 times more in taxes than she actually paid for that year. For the crimes alleged in the indictment, Ms. Pugh faces up to 20 years in federal prison for the wire fraud conspiracy and for each of the seven counts of wire fraud up to five years in federal prison for a conspiracy to defraud the United States, and up to five years in federal prison for each of the two counts of tax evasion. Ms. Pugh is scheduled for an initial appearance and an arraignment in U.S. District Court here in Baltimore before Judge Deborah Chazanow. That's scheduled for tomorrow at 1 p.m., and we anticipate that Ms. Pugh will self-surrender to the United States Marshals before then. Also unsealed are the federal indictments and guilty pleas of two former Baltimore City employees and associates of Ms. Pugh, Gary Brown Jr. and Rosalind Weddington. Mr. Brown has pleaded guilty to federal wire fraud and tax charges relating to the conduct with Ms. Pugh that I have just described. Mr. Brown and Ms. Weddington have also pleaded guilty to tax charges relating to a separate scheme to defraud the United States. Both have admitted that they conspired to avoid tax withholdings from Ms. Weddington's payroll checks, while Ms. Weddington was the executive director of the Maryland Center for Adult Training, and Mr. Brown was the chairman of the board of directors. Specifically, in 2013, Ms. Weddington's salary was garnished due to outstanding student loan debt and medical bills. In order to avoid further garnishments, Ms. Weddington asked Mr. Brown to take her off payroll, which meant that MCAT, or the Maryland Center for Adult Training, would no longer submit her name to the payroll service provider for the purpose of calculating taxes to be withheld from her salary. Mr. Brown agreed to this arrangement. He then wrote checks to Ms. Weddington and gave her cash equal to or greater than her salary. In this manner, no taxes were withheld from the funds that Mr. Brown paid to Ms. Weddington, nor did her salary go through her bank account where it was subject to garnishment. Mr. Brown faces up to 20 years in federal prison for the wire fraud conspiracy, and Ms. Brown and Ms. Weddington each face up to five years in federal prison 
for the count of conspiracy to fraud the United States and three years in prison for each count of filing a false tax return. Public office is a rare privilege and opportunity to serve and to get things done for the good of our community. Fraud and corruption of the sort we are addressing today undermine the public's faith in public officials. This is a tragedy and the last thing that our city needs. The community can be sure, however, that the many dedicated investigators and prosecutors that built this prosecution over many months will continue to be on the lookout for evidence of fraud and corruption, and we will follow it wherever the facts may lead. Complex investigations like this one take time and a lot of hard, careful work. And I am very grateful to the talented and professional teams at the FBI and the, <clears throat> and the IRSCI for their efforts. I also thank our partners at the U.S. Department of Labor, Office of Inspector General, the Maryland State Prosecutor's Office, and the Baltimore City Office of Inspector General, who share our commitment to public integrity. Finally, I'm very proud of Assistant United States Attorneys Martin Clark and Leo Wise, who have driven this matter forward relentlessly, and also to our office's criminal chief, Rob Harding, who provided wise counsel throughout. Just a reminder, an indictment, which is what we're talking about in the context of Ms. Pugh, is not a finding of guilt. An individual is presumed innocent until and unless uh, proven guilty at some later criminal proceeding. At this point, I'll turn it over to Special Agent in Charge, Jennifer Boone. Good morning. One of our greatest privileges and responsibilities as citizens is the vote. When we cast our votes, we do so with the expectation that those we elect have the welfare and interests of the communities they represent as their highest priority. This, in many ways, is a sacred trust between the people and their elected officials. Ms. Pugh violated that trust and abused her position. The interests she prioritized were her own. The indictment, the indictment announced today is an example of what happens when a public servant engages in a corrupt behavior, seeking personal gain through fraud while occupying a position of public trust. Ms. Pugh blurred the lines between her public duties and private business and failed to act in the best interests of her constituents. Actions by an elected official erode, such as those outlined in the indictment, erode public confidence and undermine the strength of our democracy. The women and the men of the FBI remain dedicated to serving our communities and I am extremely proud of those that investigated this case. This has been a complex and demanding investigation, close to three years in length. The FBI is devoted to investigating fraud and corruption. No one is above the law. And as this indictment shows, you will face consequences if you break the law. Public corruption can sometimes be difficult to detect without the assistance of concerned citizens. There is a growing intolerance by the American people of public corruption, an intolerance reflected in the willingness to come forward and report abuse of public office. We are always grateful for those who come forward to report such corruption. If anyone in the community has any information on this or any other public corruption matter, please call the FBI at 410-265-8080. I would like to conclude by thanking the FBI special agents, task force officers, intelligence analysts, and forensic accountants who investigated this case, to thank the U.S. Attorney's Office and our partners with IRS Criminal Investigation, the Department of Labor Office of Inspector General, the Baltimore City Office of the Inspector General, and the Office of the State Prosecutor. Thank you. We'll now hear from Matthew Hooker with IRS Criminal Investigation. Uh, good morning. As you're all, all aware, investigating criminal tax violations has been and will continue to be the number one priority of IRS criminal investigation. We serve the public by ensuring everyone is held accountable for complying with these laws. We are here today because public officials chose not to abide by the laws and violated the trust of the public in exchange for their own personal benefit. On behalf of IRSCI, I am proud to be here today alongside our law enforcement partners 
to tell the citizens of Baltimore that we will continue our efforts at bringing those who choose to evade taxes and erode the public's confidence in our government to justice. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. This time we'd be happy to take any questions. Mr. Kerr, is this investigation over into Mayor Q? Uh, is there more to come in this? Uh, not at liberty to comment at this point. Uh, today we're here to talk about the guilty pleas of Mr. Brown and Ms. Weddington and the indictment of Ms. Pugh. And uh, uh, that, that's, uh, that's what my comments are going to be limited to today. Has Ms. Pugh entered into any kind of plea agreement? Uh, there is, as I mentioned earlier, there's a court hearing. Her initial appearance and arraignment scheduled for tomorrow before Judge Chasnow at 1 p.m. And uh, we look forward to continuing to present uh, the government's case in court. Sir, when did you start looking into this pew? So one thing that is in the indictment that's noted is the uh, charging of Mr. Brown uh, back in January of 2017. So safe to say that the investigation was underway at that time. In, in the indictment, <coughs> there's at least one of the uh, buyers of the books who it says knew that the books would not be going totally to the schools and some would be going to the campaign. And that person also knew that this was illegal. Um, I know you just said you're not going to say what you're doing next, but um, uh, sh should, should, we, should we read into that at, at all? Well, um, uh, with respect to that particular portion of the indictment, again, I'm not at liberty to comment beyond at this time what's uh, it's in the four quarters of the indictment. But the public should be uh, confident that we are conducting a very, very thorough investigation. And uh, we, uh, the, the particular dynamic that you're alluding to uh, that's referenced in the indictment is not lost upon us either. So rest assured that we are continuing to look at all the potential uh, criminal charges that can be filed in this investigation. Are there any your use of... Opinion, uh, with, no, sir. How much thought, in your opinion, went into pulling off this alleged scheme? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question, Joy? How much thought do you think... Um, actually went into pulling off this alleged scheme? Yeah, well, it's, uh, again, I, uh, this is just an indictment, uh, and Ms. Pugh is uh, innocent uh, until proven guilty, uh, as, uh, you, as you know, in our criminal justice system. But as alleged in the indictment, there are certain facts here that suggest that this was a fraud scheme that required certain thought. And uh, two things that jump out to mind right now are the creation of the phony documents with respect to the deduction of the Healthy Holly payments to Mr. Brown. There was a, f a fake Form 1099 issued by the IRS, and that was caused by Ms. Pugh. Uh, and also, we have the, uh, the, the fake invoices that were created by Mr. Brown to correspond with the payments that he received from Healthy Holly. So those kinds of things do take uh, time and thought, and that's part of the evidence that we uncovered during the course of this investigation. Is there <clears throat> any evidence at all that the former mayor used public money in any way for her own enrichment? Well, we, uh, again, this is a matter that is still in the indictment phase. Uh, there is more to come uh, at this point. I'm not uh, able to comment uh, beyond the four corners of the charging document because Ms. Pugh is uh, still innocent until proven guilty. And so there's more to come. There are more court proceedings, and we look forward to continuing to pre present the government's case in those proceedings. Mr. Hur, can you talk about the work that went into piecing all this together? Because this took years. Yes, as I mentioned earlier, these types of investigation, uh, investigations into fraud and corruption, they do take time because there are a lot of different puzzle pieces, a lot of di different payments, and a lot of different people uh, in order to, uh, to interview in order to try to fit all the puzzle pieces together. So these types of investigations do take enormous time and dedication and ingenuity. And uh, for that reason, uh, my hats are really off to all the investigators and prosecutors that helped bring this matter to where we are today. At one point, there were, I believe, seven different investigations going into this matter, and I see a lot of these agencies up here together. Are we to assume that, that this, obviously yours is the biggest and most powerful of these organizations, um, are we to assume that all of these have come under the same umbrella, or may there still be some other investigations going on? Well, uh, I'll give the same answer that I uh, did before with respect to what comes next or where does this investigation go. Uh, we're not really at liberty to comment at this time, but I think what the picture that you should take away from the, the uh, impressive array of agencies that's gathered here today to talk about this case is uh, these kinds of things do take cooperation and partnership. 
Uh, this was a wide-ranging investigation, and we were in close coordination with each other, and that's how investigations of this level of complexity are built. And so uh, I, for one, feel very fortunate to be a member of a, a, a community like this, all of whom are dedicated to public integrity. What's the relationship between the, the book scheme and the Maryland um, Center for Adult Training? Um, Tax charges. The, the Maryland Center for Adult Training uh, tax charges. Uh, as far as we can tell, the, the relationship there is solely in the identity of Mr. Gary Brown. Do you view the donors to, or the, I'm saying donors, but the buyers of the books as, as victims or co-conspirators yeah. generally? Yeah. At this point, again, because we are in the indictment phase, uh, I'm really not at liberty to comment more about the allegations in that indictment. Uh, should this indictment go to, uh, should this matter go to trial, then that's where we would do our talking and presentation of evidence in court. But at this point, I'm not at liberty to say. Who do you suspect was the mastermind? Who was pulling the strings and calling the shots in this alleged scheme? You know, that, that is, uh, again, that goes to the subject of evidence that we look forward to presenting. Uh, that's not something I'm able to comment on right now. But uh, again, these types of investigations do take a lot of time and energy, and I'm just very grateful to all the folks who worked on this matter to get us to where we are today. One more question. Yes. Any reason to suspect that these books were sold online to anyone? Uh, I don't believe, well, that's not in the indictment, and that's what my comments at this time are, uh, are limited to. Uh, so uh, not to my knowledge at this point, at least with respect to what's contained in the indictment. All very interesting questions, uh, but not ones that I can answer at this point. Uh, my comments and what I can share with the public at this point is limited to what is containing the indictment, but we look forward to, uh, to telling more uh, in court, which is what federal prosecutors do. Thank so you very much. You, um, before you go, just all of you introduce yourselves so we know who's who up there. Sure. <clears throat> Sorry, Daniel Braylov with the State Prosecutor's Office. Sarah David with the State Prosecutor's Office. Kelly Madigan with the State Prosecutor's Office.